All right, if you own a mobile home, or in this case, a modular home that's built by a company that builds mobile homes, you may have switches and outlets that look something like this. And this is with the cover plate removed. But you can tell it's a non-traditional switch because it does not mount inside of the electrical box. It's just screwed right into the drywall and the wires are terminated inside of the switches themselves. So these switches are also commonly used in RVs as well. And on the back, it's just got a little plastic cover and the wires go in and, and can come out under that cover. And there's a little tool that basically when you lay the wires, strip and lay them in there and compress it, it crimps the wires onto the metal contacts and that's how it makes the circuit. The problem with these is, in my experience, they're complete garbage. They wear out very quickly. I'm standing in a house that is only about uh, less than, or it's around 10 years old, and a lot of the switches make arcing noises when you turn them on, or they don't work anymore. In the outlets, the plugs seem to just fall right out. Like they can't even hold the contacts in there, can't even hold a plug in and it wants to fall out. So obviously that causes heat. Heat causes resistance or resistance causes heat and it can lead to a fire. These things are garbage. So I'm going to show you how to replace these with a traditional set of switches. First step is to go to your electrical panel, find the appropriate circuit, make sure it's off. If you're uncomfortable with this type of operation, it's probably best just to hire an electrician to do it. First, let's cover the things you'll need to do the job. Obviously, you need a couple switches. You need what's called a old work box. And this is a uh, two gang box to fit two switches. And you can tell it's an old work box because it has these little flaps. What these do is when you put it in the wall and you screw it down, these come out and they go behind the drywall and they hold it into the drywall. You need a drywall saw or razor knife, just a drill, screwdriver, some wire cutters, wire stripper, a pen, and some needle nose pliers. The first step is to make sure the power is off to take out these old switches. There's screws right here, so just pop them out a little bit, like that. There's a paint seal to break that. See, the switch just pops right out. So in my case, I'm pretty lucky. I've got lots of wire that they left behind the walls here to work with. But usually how these work is, in the bottom is usually, and it can be either way, but in the bottom is the power in, and the top is where it goes out to the fixture. So in this case, here's where your power comes in, here's where the power goes out to the fan. Power comes in on the other side, goes out to the light. Um, and sometimes in mobile homes, you'll see instead of having a circuit branch from one place, it's like in a daisy chain and it runs, everything runs through each separate outlet. So in this case, there's a power wire coming in and then the power leaves that circuit and goes into this one and then leaves that and goes out to an outlet somewhere else in the room. So you kind of got to pay it. Keep in mind here, when we cut these wires off, these will be on the bottom. And those, basically, the ones that power in and ones that power out, that's on all the time. And these are your switched outputs. So the best thing to do would be to write on your wires. So this is out. And we'll say that's the light. And then this one will say out. Fan, and I'll write in on these two wires. That way, when we cut them, 
we don't forget which is which and get them mixed up. Because if you get them mixed up, then things aren't going to work the way they're supposed to. So just cut the wires off right as close to the fixture or the switch as you can. Switch. Make sure you don't lose these in the wall, but I'm just going to kind of move them out of the way a little bit. How we measure the box is pull it up to the wall, and if your old switches weren't level, you want to set a level across the top here. Get it to where it looks good. And you draw a line from here down the side. Make sure you hold it steady across the top. Another side. And you don't want to go draw a line all the way from the top. It's from this spot here, right here, down. Because that's the part that recesses in the wall, and these need to not fall through. Good on the bottom. Bottom is right at the hole where it's already at. Okay. Now hold the wires out of the way so you don't hit them with your saw. Then you want to make your cut. wires coming in the top, which is our outputs, two wires coming in the bottom, which is our inputs. So on here on these boxes, we have these little flaps. And you break them open with a screwdriver. This. And here's our outputs on the top. with here on the bottom. As you can see I got plenty of wire on the top and the bottom not so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip some of this off to make it easier now. Like I said, it's not ideal since I didn't have a whole bunch of wire to work with on the bottom here. So I'm going to have to, which is fine because I'm going to have to make connections in here anyway. But 
Alright, so just secure the box to the wall. Just careful. If you overdo this, it'll just strip right out and pull to the wall. You can start to see the box pull tight to the wall. Nice and tight. Alright, to make your connections in the box, you have a couple of options. Uh, in my case, I'm using something relatively new. Right here, this is called a uh, push-in wire connector. And it replaces using a traditional wire nut. And all you have to do is push, strip the wires, push them into here. And this one will take four wires, which is perfect for our case. And it makes connections much quicker and easier. So, especially in a tight situation like this. So down here, you have power coming in and going out to an outlet. And then I also need to feed both my switches. So since this has four positions, it's perfect. I have my power coming in, power going out, and then power going out to both switches. So to do that, you'll need some extra lengths of wire. I can pull out just the black wire in this case, which will run out of the this into one of the switches, and then I'll do the exact same thing, get another short piece of black wire, which will be the input to one of the other switches. I stripped off both ends, both of these, so I'm going to push them in. You can see that they're sticking up in the top. All right, there's another one pushed in. And then I just need to connect both the blacks in the box. All right, I'll go ahead and tuck that out of the way for now. Input to both my switches. Now, as far as the neutral, which is the white wires, you have to do the same thing except we're going to just connect all four white wires together. All neutrals go together. So you have your input, output to an outlet, output to both lights, and the neutrals are always connected, connected since they're not switched. Outputs. This would actually be easier if you were just doing a single light, but since this is controlling a fan as a light and a fan circuit. So I'll trim a little bit off, strip them down. Alright, so now I'm going to take another one of the four wire push in connectors. sure that they're completely seated and they're bottoming out in the end of the connector. Alright, get these ground wires out of the way. Tuck the lights in. The neutrals. Alright, so now ground wire. Not quite going to be as easy because even though we have four right now, we need to connect a ground wire to the green terminal on each of the switches. So what I'm going to do is get a couple extra ground, uh, just pieces of bare 
wire connected to the switches. And what we'll need to do is, in here we'll need to connect all the ground wires together. So you have a couple different ways to do that. You can just use one wire nut that's rated for six wires in this case, or you can use a couple of these caps, or the wire, the four wire connectors, and tie them together with a jumper wire in between. It's up to you how you want to do it. So in this case, I'm going to connect the two shorter ones in here. to help me. I will use a little jumper that I made here. And then I will run that jumper these pieces of wire run to the switch on this side out of there and then this jumper will connect to this one and I will connect these other Bottom out, and then we want to tuck everything, making sure that everything is separated so no one touches the back of the box. All right, so I've got my ground wires, I've got my output wires, I've got my input wires. So basically, now we're ready to connect the switch. I'm just gonna cut and strip these wires, which are the outputs to the light switch, come, came from the top of the box. So in this case, on this switch, you can either bend the wires and connect to the screws, but in this case with 14 gauge cable, you can tell it's 14 gauge, into the modern convention of wiring because it was well, it has a white sheath on it. I'm going to use the quick connect terminals on the back and they're just push in connections. But first, I'm going to make my ground connection, which is on the top of the switch in this case. So, to do that, take your needle nose pliers. Push it into the back. 
Yeah, if you're confused at how long to strip the wire, there's actually a chart on the back that shows you how long. Okay. Now you want to, what you want to do is we're going to push the switches in and we're going to bend the wires so that they have a place to go. You want to make sure that everything is neat and tidy in your box. Your bare ground wires aren't touching anything, like these live screw terminals on the side here. Alright, use the drill carefully. I get them about 90% snug down, I'll tighten them the rest of the way by hand. Before you tighten these down, you'll want to get the switch plate, the cover plate, and try it out because there is some adjustment between the switches. So you want these loose that, enough that you can get the cover plate where it needs to be. Once you're sure, then you can finish tightening these down by hand. Alright, so I'll put our switch plate on here. You see that this one needs to go that way just a little bit. That'll do it right there. Just getting started. Don't make these too tight that you break the cover plate. In this case, this is one made out of nylon, so it's not going to break as easy. But So the last step is to go switch on the power and see if we screwed anything up. Alright. There we go. Alright, well, hopefully this video helped you out. Doing an outlet is the exact same thing. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Thanks.